inconsistently and improperly. Teenagers don't like to use birth control because it's a hassle. It's something they have to do, and they want it to be spontaneous. And having birth control is not a spontaneous thing. I got pregnant when I broke up with my boyfriend and started seeing somebody new. And um, we went out for about five months, and then we had sex, and I found out I was pregnant, and I had been taking the pill all along also. The average teenager, I think, does not know uh, factually about contraception or human anatomy or much less about abortion. One study that I recall uh, indicated that uh, one out of three teenagers, excuse me, one out of four teenagers uh, became pregnant who were attempting to conscientiously contracept. Although there are more pregnancies, statistically, the clinics seem to be working. Birth rates are dropping. But why? Because one out of every three abortions in this country is performed on a teenage girl. Abortion is convenient. You know, the girl doesn't have to go home and tell her parents that she's pregnant, doesn't have to raise that baby, doesn't have to have people staring at her and, and giving her snide remarks because she's pregnant. And so, to her, the first thing that comes on in her head is, then I can have an abortion because it's easy and it's convenient. By putting contraceptives in the hands of our teenagers, we're telling them it's okay to have sex. It's okay to have an abortion. It's okay to give in. But we forget that teenagers are still children. Children sometimes desperate for attention. Children sometimes afraid to say no. Children who may want a baby because they need somebody to love. Subconsciously, I got pregnant, I think, because I wanted a baby. I wanted my own child. I wanted to have it, you know, mine. I wanted it to be mine. I think that universally, teens need to be loved. If they're not loved, and if they don't feel good about who they are, if they lack self-esteem, they're going to look for it in other areas, in other places. Unfortunately, sometimes the other places that they look for are the back seat of somebody's car, where then they are contributing and creating a new life. Uh, sometimes a new life in an infant and a baby gives them uh, self-worth. It gives them someone to love and someone to love them. They're able to show it off, and they like the idea of being pregnant at times also. When we look at our permissive society, sometimes it seems easier to give a child a pill and to teach them respect for love, for themselves, and for each other. In the end, it's up to our children themselves to say no. But we can do our part by speaking openly about our values, by making our children feel secure and appreciated. And no matter what mistakes they make, by sharing with them a love that will never let them down. And one important way for you to show that love is by joining the fight to stop school-based clinics. But I think what we're doing, if we allow the clinics to come in, is to d take one of the last final stabs at the family, uh, to finally undermine the whole mor moral quality of our society, and if not, to destroy the futures of our children. I just think it is one of the most dangerous and insidious things to come along in a long time. In cities across our country, parents like you have prevented school-based clinics from opening their doors. But the battle moves on. At this moment, in hundreds of school districts, abortion and family planning advocates are spreading the message that birth control is the only answer to teenage pregnancy, even though it doesn't work. An adolescent girl will have hormonal surges that obviates the effectiveness of the contraceptive so that um, among women of all age, six out of a hundred women using contraceptives will get pregnant. And for adolescents, that number is much, much greater. If you believe school is a place for children to find out who they are, not how much they can get away with, if you think birth control has no place in junior high, then please get involved. You can let people know how you feel through phone calls to local officials writing letters, circulating petitions, participating in public meetings, by talking to your friends and neighbors. 
If you'd like to do more, join a Citizens Action Group and see how much power people like you really have. In this troubled world, each of us can be a force for good, but we have to be willing to stand up for what we believe in. I think that parents can have a tremendous impact if parents really want to. Um, if they will give up just a short amount of time to educating themselves and gaining confidence and beginning to communicate more frequently and more openly with their children, I think that we have the ability to guide and direct the children of this nation in the way we want them to grow up. There are other ways to help our children deal with the problems of growing up. Proven, effective alternatives to school-based clinics. But they have to be given a chance. If you act now, your children will see your love for them in action. They'll know that life is still a matter of right and wrong. And they'll learn that love sometimes means saying no. Please, Help our children experience the fulfillment of life as it's meant to be. Help stop school-based clinics now. I think that it's very important for us to understand that we shouldn't underestimate our youth. They want guidelines and they want something to believe in. As parents, it's important for us to instill good values and to encourage them to become educated and to promote good skills, but not to underestimate them. They are capable of us believing in them, and I think we need to do that. <laughs>